an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge by the infamous Ambrose Bierce. Coming up today. This is like the quintessential keep you in suspense. The whole story. Yeah. Is he going to make it? Yeah. <laughs> the story is famous, man. Uh. Like you've got you've got this has inspired TV shows, movies, plays, radio productions. You and I, I actually looked at my notes. We've talked about this in three other videos, only just now covering it today. Yeah, we did it in, what, The Life of Chuck, The Golden Pavilion, The Swimmer, and I could have swore there was a fourth one that we've talked about. We've talked about this or referenced this story many, many times, so I'm glad that we're finally getting around to it because uh, it's kind of near and dear to my heart. I remember reading it in high school in that big, fat literature book, and it also is one of my favorite history time periods, the Civil War. So Ambrose Bierce, right, is a person that, if you didn't know, actually was a loyalist for the Union. Right. Obviously, this is a story that talks about the South, but I think there's some things to expose here. And I'm sure you, being an ex-history teacher, will have plenty of interesting things to say. But it's worth kind of knowing that about him. Now, this story is quite interesting because what we're going to do today is we're going to do a plot recap just to make sure we're on the same page and then do our old school format where we just do discussions and themes, if that's okay. Let's do it. Start at the beginning. We're on Owl Creek Bridge. Putting the noose around your neck. With my boy, <laughs> who's a ho fellow Hoosier, by the way. So we start out in northern Alabama, but fear not, we are definitely in the south. Don't let that dirty northern word confuse you. We learn a man <laughs> is about to be hanged, and he's on a railway bridge about 20 feet above the water, looking down. And the soldiers all around him, um, and, and a noose around his neck, of course. So the man looks down at the river and hears these, these ticking sounds, like the anvils in the distance, and it turns out it's his watch. He hears the water moving slowly down below him and it turns into gold off in the distance under the sun's reflection mm. in part two we learn the man's name is peyton farquhar he's a well-to-do planter he's a slave owner a secessionist and he is devoted to the cause you have to tell me what that means mr history teacher one day <laughs> peyton was on his uh property with his wife when a man in a gray uniform walked up to them you have to teach me what this gray means sir and gray being the color of the South, uh, a.k.a. that was his college team of choice. Uh, the man warned him that the North was coming and was about to fix Owl Creek Bridge. Like they're going to invade across this bridge, right? So, oh gosh, if only one took, if only anyone took that driftwood <laughs> down below, it would easily burn the bridge. Hint, hint, wink, wink. And the last paragraph drops. An hour later after nightfall, he repassed the plantation going northward. Right, so he's heading north towards the enemy. If he's a gray soldier, why is he going that way? Uh, because he was a federal, or I didn't read the whole quote, but going northward in the direction from which he had come, he was a federal scout. Interesting. Part three, hmm. cut back to the hanging on the bridge. Farquhar has this moment where he blanks out and he kind of wakes up in the stream of water that was below him. His rope must have snapped and he, he hears nature about him all at once. And he starts hearing the bullets hit the water. So he, he dives in, takes off, and apparently had grape shots ready for this hanging. I don't know why he had grape shots ready at a hanging. Uh, you, have to teach me <laughs> you have to teach me if that's a thing. But they had it. He, he escapes into the water, and you hear this quote of uh, the soldiers above. Their movements were grotesque and horrible. Their forms gigantic. So he escapes the water. His neck hurts, and he suddenly realized, oh, he must have walked all night, because now he's at the gate of his house, so excited to see his wife. And then, mm. sudden blow in the back of his neck, blinding light. Nope. He was hanged. He's dead. <laughs> End plot. The whole thing was in his mind. Poor guy. Uh, Poor guy. I mean, I mean, and I know this... So, I mean, to, to that point, there might be some people that have read this and be like, oh, okay, I'm not 100% sure... So you, you said it very quickly there that that this whole thing was in his mind. Like what whole thing? Like part three, right? Where he was trying to escape into the water. The bullets were blazing after him. His escape to his wife. All that was just imagined from the time that he was about to be hanged to when he was dead. Yeah, and I think that, again, we've said that this has been referenced, you know, this idea so many times. And so it may not seem like a big shocker to you. But remember, when this was written, this, I think, is a, a new idea that an entire life could be lived in a second. Your whole life flashes before your eyes, and that's really what's happening here. And I love the imagery of, of setting everything up and how, you know, he, he's there ready to die, and then he gives himself hope. And when he gives himself hope, as you notice, that he gets hope, 
and he goes through this adventure of, of surviving, and then it's ripped away from him the last second. And, you know, it, it is a sad-ish ending, I guess, uh, but it, it does a brilliant job of setting up that uh, false pretense and then ripping the rug out underneath you uh, and, and giving you a shock ending. And I think that's what's, you know, so brilliant and what's, you know, so famous about this is it's one of those first shock ending ideas. And you do a really good job of of keeping me on track with those main points. I get so excited with these side ones, if you will. Uh, let's 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 dig into this a little bit, shall we? Because beyond that twist, this story is, in my opinion, a masterpiece for a lot of different reasons. Right? Um, Civil War stuff. Talk to me about what you noticed for Civil War stuff in this. The imagery is really interesting of how um, he he Ambrose takes the idea of the colors and throughout the whole story, you see the gray and the blue and the yellows all kind of blended together, representing, uh, you know, kind of this light and dark, a positive and negative fight back and forth between the North and the South. Uh, and I thought that was done really well. Uh, I also like the idea how, you know, and he's writing it relatively close to the time period, you know, of the civil war. Uh, so there, there's a lot of words like the grape shot. Someone might not realize what that is if they're reading it nowadays. Uh, so that is a specific, uh, cannonball that is mainly used to shot, um, uh, at the, the mast of like, um, a ship. Um, so it's basically kind of looks like a grape. Uh, it has, you know, two cannonballs that are soldered together with a piece of chain. And I think that you were asking the question about, you know, why was that there? I think that they're hanging him near the northern fort, and so they had their cannons ready to go. But also, remember mm. that this is all happening in the imagination, and so it gives it a little bit more spark to the escape if it's a little bit more, you know, exciting, uh, mm -hmm. because it's not really happening uh, as he's, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get away from his hanging. Do you notice all the references to Gray, right? Like you had the man in the gray uniform who was really a scout. Right. You had when he got out of the water, you had the gray spider spinning a web when he first got out. And when he looked at the, the snipers or the hangmen on, on, on the bridge, like they had gray eyes. And I thought that was interesting. All this, all these colors associated with, if, if, if you, I don't know if we said it, gray was the color of the Southern uniform during the Civil War, while blue was the color of the North. Right. Yes, and we know that the South loses, so it's kind of like the death of the South in in color form um, was kind of my interpretation of that that the, the gray represents loss or the losing of the South. Did you think there was a theme here of things aren't always as they seem? Yes, uh, um, obviously, like the the scout is a northern spy. And, you know, he's trying to, I think, to root out, you know, who might be trying to do something dastardly deeds. Um, I, I think that perception is, is a big thing. I almost kind of felt like an, a horror element, too, where the the surface of it is all pretty. But when you get into the nitty gritty, you know, it's about life and death. Uh, and, and it almost had also this supernatural element to it because after the hanging... Um, and Farquaad falls into the water, everything becomes like supernatural-like. Did you notice that? That, oh, yeah. that time slowed in essence, um, mm -hmm. the colors become more vibrant, um, He his train of thought is speeding up and slowing down, and it's almost like a clue given to you that there was a shift in the story from realism to this fantasy world um, as the, the quote, uh, putting in quotes because it doesn't really happen, the, the noose breaks and he falls into the water. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you can categorize this as, you know, one type of story. There's just so many layers to it. It's like an right. onion. <laughs> well, it's it's one of the earlier stories that I can think of. I'm not saying it's the first, but it's one that really does a great job of exploring that irregularities of time. Because remember, the opening section, you had like the, it was like the pounding of the anvil or something like that, but it was really the ticking of the watch. The time was coming. And he was looking down at the water, but the water seemed to be moving slow, right? And, and there's all this stuff happening in part one, right? And then you start part two, and all of a sudden, you're, you're assaulted with information. Like, we learned the guy's name. We learned what the guy's job was. We learned what loyalty he has in the war. We learned that there's politics of why he could or couldn't participate in battles. We learned that all along that he's had this history that he wanted to be a secessionist, like... 
it's it's crazy how in the beginning it's so slow, right? Like life is slow at this point in time. And then all of a sudden there's this, this rapid motion. And then all of a sudden, like when we go into this dream world of like the fight, it's, it's survival, right? Bullets hitting the water. We're diving underneath. We're driving out. Yeah. Uh, and then we escape to which side of the bank of, of the river, sir? The north. The southern bank. Oh, I thought he made it to the north bank. No, no, he he escaped on the southern oh. side, sir. So he's he's running back to the south, and and he gets he gets home to uh, the house. What what does he reach first at the house? Is it's fence right with the gate, right? Yeah, like it's interesting. They specifically call block. it the gate, and that's right when he dies, yeah. right? So it's kind of like the is, were these the gates of the- heaven? You know, gates what I of mean? heaven, yep. Or, or the gates to the afterlife, whatever you want. Gates to, to hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I thought too. Uh, I, I was looking for more because uh, again, I hadn't read this since high school, and I I, I knew how it ended. Uh, refresh some of my memories, uh, you know, on the details. But I thought, you know, uh, was this the River Styx? You know, was he going into the afterlife? Uh, that's what he was experiencing. I tried to look for something there, and I, I really couldn't find anything. Um, but beautifully masterly done story. And I think that, you know, it, it is synonymous for that kind of gut punch ending. But if you look for the clues throughout the story, you can kind of see how it was crafted to be this almost puzzle piece putting together of what's happening to Farqua. Did you know that the word water appeared 20 times in this piece? I did not count that. <laughs> yeah. So, so in the beginning to your point, um, I think this played into that theme of the regularities of time, like how sometimes like there's the perception of things moving fast and moving slow. And to your point about it maybe being the river sticks, like I don't know, but like life's is slow in the beginning. That water's moving slow. We don't even know the guy's name. We don't know anything about him. We don't even know if he's is he being hanged? Like, oh my gosh, I think he's being hanged. And then part two, it just it just takes off. Right. And that's when we're plunged into the water, plunged into the river sticks, afterlife even perhaps. And when bullets are being shot at him, he escapes into the water and he rides this water downstream. Uh, it's crazy how many like references there are to water and the idea of him diving into fantasy, diving into this long drawn out. Like if, if you if you are being hanged, like like from from it being dropped to when you're run out of slack. I mean, I guess it depends on the size of the rope, but since the river's only 20 feet down below, there ain't much time, right? And for him, to your earlier point of him experiencing all this of of life is normally slow and then there's all these high action moments and it's honestly, is it this man's fault, right? Like we learned he was there because a federal scout tricked him. Right. They said, like, oh, you can help the cause if you go do this, setting a trap for this guy. And they caught him and they hanged him for it. Right. It's almost like a little lesson in we should slow down. Right. Like, like we don't need to get caught up in the fast rivers of life or in all the de- in all these scary details or what's being presented to us. It's almost like that since things aren't always as they seem. We should slow down, analyze a little bit more, pay pay attention to life, otherwise it could pass us by even. Oh, that's good. I also think about it like the fact that because we talk so much about gray and the representation of the South and water sometimes being rebirth, this is the fall of the South and the rebirth of them and having to become something new because their old way of life died, Farqua died, and had to be reborn into something new as mm. they're going to have to learn to move forward without slavery anymore uh, right. because they're yeah. going to lose the Civil War. So there's a, there's a lot of beautiful imagery in this story, especially for such a short story, so much cram-packed into there. Uh, it, it really is a masterpiece. Well, and we didn't even mention the sensations. Like you mentioned earlier about how like, he, he's entering, <laughs> you, you mentioned sense, don't get me wrong, but we didn't mention about like the sensations of like the pain in his neck. There's like, oh yeah, there's like several like, oh, he had a pain in his neck and all of a sudden there's this blinding light and then all of a sudden he's hit in the back of his head. Like this is, these are all things like if, if we view this as a dream world and the real life is, is he's just being hanged in the matter of a second, like that pain of the, of the noose hitting your neck ha- happens instantaneously. But in this dream world, he's having like this warning of it, this pain, this sensation. Well, it's like 
w- was that just like the initial snap and a couple of seconds of hanging there? And, and you see how it's just reminding him of like, remember, because it happened as soon as when um, the bullets were shooting and he dove underwater, he felt some metal hit his neck. Remember, like they, they talked about him reaching for it. And I think that's the second that he dropped because he starts to feel the tension of the neck at that point in time. And then he's falling because we don't hear about it for a couple seconds. He's in this way. And he struggled to breathe, too. Remember? Yeah. 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 No, you're absolutely Down in the water. Right. Cause it was the water was pulling him down. He was struggling to breathe. And yeah. And, and then life just passed him by like it went too fast because he didn't sit, slow down to analyze. And then there's all those pains in the neck, but it's happening so fast. He's like reliving all of his mistakes. Yeah, I, I, I just keep thinking of like how many times this story has been stolen and used for movies and everything. And like it, it's so good that you could take that imagery and, and cram it into a short story. And then it's very meta that his whole story, the hi- highlights of the story are crammed into basically one second of our imagination. And that as he falls and that snap and that you live your whole life then and he he almost achieves his goal and you almost like you're almost rooting for him to be like oh maybe he could have just had it maybe in his mind he did but as an outside viewer he doesn't get to make it to his wife and his family great writing from Ambrose Bierce and and I really do think that this is a, a masterpiece of a short story I can't believe it took us this long to get to it, even though we have like referenced it like for like several <laughs> times on this channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what your thoughts are on this piece down below. What other masterpieces should we be reading? My name is Benuna. Peace. Peace.